the things I love about doing What's Been Makeup is that every week when I sit down to research, I never know what I'm going to find. I never know what is going to be like, what are they doing? <laughs> What's the flop of the week? <laughs> you know, what are the indie brands doing? We have so much indie brand news this week, but some really interesting launches from mainstream brands. The one from Milk Makeup actually looks really cool, and I have a feeling that brands are going to start copying off of them soon. We also have what happened with the Skin Cosmetics by Kim Kardashian launch. I have all the details of how that all rolled out. We have some sneak peeks of Super Bowl commercials advertising specific products. And of course, what has launched and what is launching soon from Ulta and Sephora, the sales that are going on this week. So much to share with you. So hang tight. We are jumping into it right now. Hello, my friend. Welcome back to What's Up in Makeup, where we talk about everything that was launched in the makeup space all in one place so that you can see all of the things and decide if you want to buy something or if you're just curious to see what beauty brands are doing and you don't feel like purchasing anything, this is here for you too. So today we are going to start off with the Skin Cosmetics launch. That's Kim Kardashian's rebrand of KKW Beauty. The products are now available and what she calls elevated packaging. The prices are also elevated and I got a little nerdy and crunched some numbers. So the lip liner price increased 82% from $12 to $22. The lipsticks increased 78% from $18 to $32. And the palette price didn't really change that much, but it looks like the pans have significantly shrunk in size. The price on the palette went from $45 and it only went up by $5 to $50, but it looks like you're getting significantly less product. But what I was really surprised about was that very few things seem to have sold out. So one shade of lipstick sold out, a couple of shades of the lip liner, and that was it. But even more shocking was that Glossy put out an article about the web traffic that was going to the website and kind of comparing it. And basically it seems like Glossy is putting together the narrative that the skin cosmetics launch was a flop. I don't know if I believe that 100% though, so let me just present it to you so you can decide what you think. So. They shared data from a website called Similar Web. And what Similar Web does is they go on a bunch of different search engines and they aggregate the data and then they spit it out. You do have to have a subscription to that. And I, I'm, I'm be honest, I, I'm cheap. <laughs> I didn't want to pay for the subscription. So I didn't crunch the numbers myself. I'm just looking at what Glossy said. But what I did do was I made you charts because I feel like everything is easier to see in a chart. That's just me and my neurodivergent brain. So hopefully it helps you too. So Glossy went into this website and they compared four different brands, the Skin Cosmetics, of course, and then they compared it to Kylie, her sister, Kylie Cosmetics. Then they compared it to her makeup artist, Mario Devanovic, who owns Makeup by Mario, and then another notable celebrity that they thought had about equivalent star power, Jennifer. For Lopez's JLo Beauty. The data are from December 24th to January 21st. So you'll notice in the chart that Kim had significantly less traffic than the other websites, both as a daily average and as a monthly number. But what the glossy article missed, which is why I question it, is what was happening on those other websites to show that Kim, why was Kim getting less traffic and why were these websites getting more traffic? And it's because those other brands were launching things and Kim's website was not launching anything because they were preparing for this rebrand of the makeup. She still had all of her skincare available there, but she wasn't launching any new skincare products. So for example, Kylie launched her foundations, which there was a lot of hype around on January 17th, which probably accounts for the traffic that went to her site. Mario launched his lipsticks on December 26th and Jennifer launched a limited edition Glow Plus Get It Hydrating Mist on January 10th. And like I said, skin, the, the skincare products by skin didn't launch anything. So it makes sense that they would have more traffic, right? This is the other piece of data that they talk about. On the day of launch, web traffic to Skin by Kim doubled to 10,000. 800 visits. They say it was driven mostly by social posts from the brand, organic search, and paid search. And by the next day, which was Saturday, January 27th, the web traffic had dropped back down below 5,000 visits. So in reality, what does this mean? To me, it means, you know, people ask, is, is this line a dud? Are, are people just not interested in Kim Kardashian's makeup? 
there it seems like there is a good there's there's people there's thousands of people that visited the website more than they normally would but it doesn't seem like the interest in this relaunch was nearly as high as the interest in let's say Kylie's foundation and then when we're thinking about the traffic that dropped the next day after the launch I'd be curious to compare apples to apples here and look and see after the foundation launch over at Kylie's website how much did her traffic drop after Mario's lipstick launch how much did it drop there JLo's setting you know I want to compare apples to apples here and Glossy just doesn't give that information which I feel like paints an incomplete picture. Honestly I feel like the only way to really compare this to get true data would be to collect it over a long period of time. Six months after multiple launches from all of the brands and then compare it. I don't feel like this is necessarily a fair comparison from Glossy. But what we do know from this is that the skin makeup did not break the internet. It absolutely did not and all we'll have to do is kind of watch it from here and see how it goes. With the Super Bowl fast approaching and brands knowing that this is going to be a big game, for people to watch. I, I think there's going to be a lot of people that don't typically watch football watching this game because of all the hype behind Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey, who is one of the players for the Kansas City Chiefs. Like, it's a whole thing here in the state. If you haven't seen any of this go down, it has been everywhere all over the news. So I would imagine that the ads that roll on this particular Super Bowl, it's going to be huge. And beauty brands haven't traditionally advertised for the Super Bowl. I mean, occasionally you might get something, but last year, Elf Cosmetics put up an ad with Jennifer Coolidge and it seems to have done very, very well. So it's not surprising to me that other brands are jumping on this. So this past week, we got a sneak peek from NYX Cosmetics with an ad that's going to run for the Super Bowl with Cardi B. She is going to be promoting the Duck Plump lip gloss. I'm gonna go ahead and put it, uh, the little teaser for you up now. NYX Duck Plump. That's suspicious. That's weird. Break it. <laughs> And of course, Elf is not going to miss out on an opportunity to have another viral moment like they had with Jennifer Coolidge's ad last year. They have hired three people from the cast of a show called Suits, as well as Megan Trainer, who has done promotions for them in the past. If you're not familiar with Suits, it has been on Netflix. It shot to one of the most watched shows on Netflix, even though the show no longer exists on live TV. Uh, 2011 to 2009 was the run of the show and I think that people were just really interesting because Megan the Duchess of Sussex was in the show as an actress it was like her biggest part I believe that she had before she became the Duchess of Sussex so I think people were just really interested in seeing how her acting was and then they got hooked into the show and really enjoyed it so it became extremely popular on Netflix the ad is going to promote Elf's Halo Glow liquid filter again it's going to have three actors from the show Suits as well as as Benito Skinner, also known as Benny Drama, Ronald Gladden from Jury Duty, Heidi in Closet uh, from RuPaul's Drag Race, as well as a former NFL player named Emmanuel Ocho. So we'll just have to see how this all plays out and what the commercials actually are. I think that it's so smart of them to put teasers out ahead of time on their socials to really bring more people to watch the Super Bowl and to get engaged with it. It's, it's great marketing. It really is. And I'm very curious what other beauty brands are going to show up this year. If you've never heard of Mac Underground, it is a very interesting concept. So what Mac does is they're playing off of like limited edition, high-end fashion. So when you have a very limited run of something, it creates that buzz and makes people really excited about it and it sells out. So they've done these Mac Underground launches a few times. The last one that I remember was the Mac Stack Mascara and they released it in different colors. It was like a bright green and a blue and it sold out like immediately. So MAC has just released something else for MAC Underground. And what it is, is it's two highlighters. They're the Jelly Slime Over Highlighters. They say it's a, ref a light reflecting, silky smooth, buildable formula that features pearlescent pigment technology made for eyes, face, and body. There's two metallic hues. Slime is Money, which is a metallic gold, and Silver Slime, which is a silver chrome. They say that they flatter every skin tone, but they don't seem to be as big of a hit 
hit as some of the previous Mac Underground products that sold out immediately, these are still available. They've been out for almost a week. New product from Jones Road. I feel like we haven't seen much from them recently. So this is kind of exciting. It's called the Neutralizer Pencil, $25 each. There's nine shades. It says it brightens and color corrects darkness around the eyes for extra tired days. Creamy yet dense concealer is formulated with a clear base for no chalky undertones. Shades range in hues from peaches and pinks to fully canceled darkness under the eyes and anywhere on the face. I think this is a really good product to put out. I like the format for it. Uh, it really seems to fit Jones Road very, very well. Next we have from Juvia's Place. Not surprised they're coming out with a liquid blush. They came out with it, I should say, because it's out. The Blushed Liquid Blush Lighter, $18, seven shades. They say it's pigmented color that catches the light in all the right places, infused with radiance reflecting pearls. It creates a stunning multi-dimensional glow. They say you can layer it with powder blush, liquid blush, powder highlighters, and liquid highlighter for the most polished glowing look. Now I want to mention, I think this came out like the week before, but we did have, uh, I didn't do a show last week. So some of these things are going to be things that came out last week that you might have seen on other, um, you know, will I buy it videos last week, but I wasn't here for that. So I want to, <laughs> I want to make sure I fill you in in case you don't watch any of those other shows. I didn't want y'all wondering why I was late on things. It's because we didn't do one last week because I was out of town. Anyway, let's move on to the one that I am actually most excited about from a major brand. And this is the Milk Makeup Cooling Water Jelly Tint. It is listed as coming soon, but I know some influencers are already reviewing it. There's four shades and they say it's a long lasting lip and cheek stain with a hydrating bouncy jelly texture that glides on for a sheer buildable burst of color. It is meant to be a blush and a lip stain. I couldn't find the price on this, but their Lip Plus Cheek products are 24 bucks. So I would imagine it'll be somewhere around that same price. Uh, I think it's a very cute idea. I like that it's clear. I like that it's a bold color. I like the marketing of it. The marketing of it has all this like jelly stuff, like gummy bears and stuff. Like, it's very cute. So I can see this doing really, really well. And I can see some drugstore brands starting to come out with a similar product to kind of copy this at a lower price point. If you are interested, you can sign up for their wait list. It is on their website now. REM Beauty is launching the Hypernova collection coming on on February 8th, there's going to be six new matte bronzer shades, the Mist Thing setting spray, and then two brushes, the B1 blush brush and the B2 bronzer brush. And this may be, may be REM's first launch post Forma brands when they bought the rights to the brand back. Because if you followed all of that, you know, Forma, what, who also owns Morphe, owned Jaclyn Cosmetics before they shut down. Forma was doing all of the things for REM Beauty. They were hiring photographers for their ad campaigns, things like that. Uh, we don't know how deep in the manufacturing they were, but it appears that they were doing all of the manufacturing for REM Beauty. So I'm really curious, now that Ariana has parted with them, what her team is going to do with the formulas and whether the quality will improve. Because before, when Forma owned it, I didn't hear great things about the brand. So I'm hoping that things will improve at this point. Moving on to very, very pricey stuff. Just one this week though, we have from Shanta Kai. Their spring 2024 sea turtle collection has launched. It is inspired by the glittering sea and warm sands of South America where marine turtles thrive. On Instagram, they say in the caption next to the photo of the collection that the spring 2024 collection reconnects Shantakai with the Amazon conservation team and their ancestral tides initiative, which draws on innovative conservation and indigenous wisdom to protect cherish sea turtles. So the sea turtle eye trio, you have the choice of cool or warm. Those are $78 each. And then there are four sea turtle lip sheets in either cool shades or warm shades. Those are $54 each. Moving on to more indie brands. Let's start with the ones, the indie brands that are a little bit more mainstream first and then we'll get a little more indie indie so we're going to start with the glam light and betty boop collab now i have never been a betty boop person but i know the betty boop fans are real and they are intense and they love their betty boops so <laughs> this definitely has a target market we have individual prices of these products ranging from 12 dollars to 32 dollars. if you want all of the products and the pr box that's going to run you 118 dollars. if you don't want the box but you just want all of the products that's going to save you 12 
bucks. Now in the collection, we have the boop boop ba doop 15 color palette and it does have a 3D motion when you turn the palette. There's the Boopalicious Full Volume Mascara, Bring On The Boop Lip Kit, Blush Duo, which also has that 3D motion, a handheld mirror, and lashes. There's also a cosmetic bag that doesn't come in the set, but you can buy it separately. It has that lenticular motion. It's $35. Influencer news, very exciting. Second collab with Khaki Reviews Beauty and Finding Ferdinand, the Apresque collection. I don't know if I said that in a French enough accent. I did my best. <laughs> Après, up, up. The only time I've ever practiced French is for this show, so my French accent is terrible. I'm just admitting it. But après ski, how'd I do? They do okay? I don't know. Khaki did set this up to complement her warm toned summer abroad collection. This is the cool toned version. The full collection had three cream blushes, two what she called blush adjusters, and three flavored lip glosses. So as of filming, two out of the three blushes are still available and then everything else is sold out. I was not attending very well apparently when this launched or else I would have totally gotten the lip glosses. I got her lip gloss the lemon cello one from the summer broad collection and I freaking love that lip gloss so I would have totally scooped up the lip glosses if they were still available but I'm hoping that it restocks. According to Khaki she says that the collection was meant to achieve that off-duty wind chapped mountain skin which I love that and it looks really beautiful on her. I'm gonna go ahead and link her launch video down below in case you'd like to see more about the collection. The next brand is Colored Rain and I would love to see Colored Rain make a comeback man. They were like all the rage when they first launched and I feel like they just haven't come back to their full glory and they really did make some very very good products so right now they have just launched the cam quad volume one palette it's $36 here's what they say about it packed with 16 pans of four distinct quads you can create every look imaginable with a plethora of shades our metallic foils really sparkle take your pics and show them off you fabulous thing you it's really pretty and I love that they're doing the quads to help people really figure out which shades are going to go best together. Trixie Cosmetics also launched a new collection called the Hotline Collection. Prices range from $7 to $26. There's two gel pot liners in white and black. There's also a hand mirror, some press-on nails, and a custom liner brush. CXC Beauty just launched their Enchanted Chateau Collection. The full collection is $205. Individual products are $17 to $59. The collection includes a 21 shade eyeshadow palette a mini nine pan version of that eyeshadow palette, the Enchanted Kiss lip palette, two new blushes, the Enchanted Chateau pink highlighter, and two new lip plumping glosses. You can either choose black packaging or white packaging when you order. Really, really beautiful collection there. Next up, Adept Cosmetics. They've released their Flying Fiddles palette, $62. They say it's named after the Siberian iris with a muted grungy twist. There are four mattes, one multi-chrome, four duochromes, and six shimmers. It is a really pretty more natural palette coming from them. Uh, when I was scrolling through their Instagram, I noticed this seems to be a little more natural. And you know, Adept hasn't really been on my radar, but one thing I really appreciate about this is if you go to the purchase page on their website, they literally put disclaimers for freaking everything. And I love that. They're basically review, like giving an honest review of their product on the side before you buy. So like, like for example, it talks about how you need a really good eye primer in order to avoid creasing and fallout. So if you think that you have an issue with creasing and fallout, this is probably not the palette for you and then you just don't buy it. Like I love that. Like just letting people know and there's a bunch of little tips in there uh, to kind of help people understand what they're buying. The other thing I absolutely love is they have down at the bottom different discount codes that you can use. They have all their influencers listed with their codes, like not their names, but just the codes so that you can get 10% off your order instead of like having to hunt down or whatever like you know, giving that that credit to somebody even if you don't know the person I think that's fantastic Unearthly Cosmetics has launched their Valentine's Day mystery box. They're giving some hints as far as what's in it, but they're not completely showing it. So the mystery box is $145. They are on their second batch of pre-orders. So you are not getting this until April, my friend, if you order this. But 
if you want it, it is available for pre-order. There's 12 full-size cosmetic items in the mystery box, along with tools designed for those who crave vibrant, bold colors that make a statement. If you pause the video on Instagram, you can see a little bit of what's going to be in here. So the boxes are labeled with the title Charmer. There is going to be a palette in there, a makeup brush, a liquid eyeliner, a lipstick, a lip oil, blush, and two lip glosses, but it looks like there's going to be more in there as well. A few brands that I've never featured on What's Up In Makeup, but I wanted to show you. They were put into our What's Up In Makeup Hunters group and they're very interesting. So let's talk about Creature Lab Cosmetics. We have the Bloodsucker Collection. It's going to be available for pre-order on Valentine's Day. All products are officially licensed with Myla Nermi's Vampira and Bella Lugosi's Dracula, which is super, super cool. Prices range from $20 to $65 per product with a box set at $150. There's a 16 pan palette, contours and powders palette, a highlight and blush palette, two cream lipsticks and a cosmetic bag. The next brand, it took me a minute because the brand is Get Stoned, okay? But it's spelled with two N's, which I imagine is because someone probably already had S-T-O-N-E-D, so they just made it S-T-O-N-N-E-D, but it's pronounced just like stoned. I heard the owner talking about it. So she has released a 10-pan shimmer palette. It's $42. She says they're high-impact shimmers based off of their top-selling rhinestones, which is their main product, is cosmetic rhinestones that you stick on. Ladybug Glow has launched their Creatura palettes. Hopefully I did okay on that one. $41.25 or $37 with the code GLOW10. That's going to come with eight mattes, one holochrome, two multichromes, and one duochrome. And I can honestly say I have never seen a palette that looks quite like this. <laughs> It looks like a flying elephant. Like it's it's super weird, but it's the creature palette. Like, I mean, that's what it that's what it is. Very creative. Lots of credit for creativity and bravery putting a flying elephant on a palette. I think that's that's wonderful. And then finally we have from Wicked Widow Beauty the Love Sick Collection. Eight pan palette, $36. The lip liquid lipstick trio shades are in dark desire which is a rich purple petalous rose a soft pinky mauve and enchanted spell which is a bold deep brown they are 34 dollars, and then a cosmetic bag at six dollars Moving over to Sephora, Sephora and Ulta were a little slower. Indie brands were crushing it, lots of launches, but Sephora and Ulta, a little bit slower. Let's talk about it. We have from Kosas a brand new complexion product. This is the BB Burst Tinted Moisturizer Gel Cream with Copper Peptides, $38. There are 24 shades and they do look like they're a pretty nice gradient. Uh, some of the shades look almost though like they have kind of a purple undertone, which is kind of weird, but because it's a sheer product, I'm not sure how much that's going to impact the outcome application. We'll just have to wait and see. So this is what they say. They say a clean tinted gel cream that's a fresh take on tinted moisturizer. It delivers a refreshing burst of active skincare, light buildable coverage, and a smooth hydrated natural finish. I'm very curious to see people trying this on and what it looks like on the skin. Iconic London launched a new highlighter. It is the Lit and Luminous Baked Highlighter, $29. It only comes in one shade. They say it's a champagne tone highlighting powder that brightens up your complexion in an instant for a diffused and gorgeous glow. It is supposed to be a universal shade and it is totally giving me Becca Opal vibes, like 100%. I'm sure it's not exactly the same, but it's giving me that. And I loved Becca Opal, so I think it looks really pretty. And then also at Sephora, we have a shade extension from Ulla Henriksen, coming for summer Fridays. They're coming for summer Fridays. The Pout Preserve Hydrating Peptide Lip Treatment, $22. It is in three new shades. There is the Strawberry Sorbet, the Coco cream and the blood orange spritz. Now, I don't know if it smells like those things, but I was led to believe in the description that it smells like those things, which sounds freaking amazing. And then one set of products that's coming soon to Sephora, all from Makeup Forever launching on February 8th, starting off with the HD Skin Hydra Glow Foundation, $47, 32 shades. And you know, because it's Makeup Forever, it's going to have a nice gradient. They say it's an 86% skincare based foundation with medium coverage and a naturally luminous finish that hydrates smooth and visibly plumps and brightens skin. The first ingredient in this product is water. And then the second
second ingredient in this is lemon extract, which really makes me a little nervous for people with sensitive skin. I am concerned that the lemon extract is going to be harsh on the skin, but we all know that the whole formulation is what makes up whether it would be skin sensitizing or whether it would be irritating to people. So I'm very curious to see whether people are gonna have an issue with this product because of that lemon extract. There are some hydrating ingredients in here though, and then also some skin balancing ingredients that are specifically great for oily skin. So I'm very curious to see reviews on this one. Along with that from Makeup Forever, we have the HD Skin Shine Controlling and Blurring Setting Powder. This is interesting too. $43, six shades, a super fine setting powder that diminishes excess shine for a soft matte finish that lasts 24 hours without caking or enhancing texture. And it's described as medium coverage, which I thought was really interesting for a setting powder. Usually a setting powder is not going to have any coverage or very, very minimal. And they're saying it has a medium coverage. Usually that's a powder foundation. But you know, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. And then the last product from Makeup Forever is the number 118 HD Skin Hydro Glow Foundation Brush. It's $45, specifically made for liquid and cream products. Oh wait, there is one more. There's one more thing launching soon at Sephora. I read my script wrong. House Labs, you think I didn't write it myself. <laughs> House Labs PhD Hybrid Lip Glaze Plumping Gloss, $26, six shades, coming soon. They say it is a next-gen burn-free plumping glaze. It visibly plumps lips with hydration. The restoring non-sticky four-in-one fuses lip oil, balm, plumper, and gloss. So of course I'm sitting here thinking, I'm like most plumpers, most lip plumpers, how they plump your lips is they burn your lips. <laughs> with usually hot pepper extract and it irritates your lips and brings blood flow to the lips, which makes them plump, right? If not that, then it's gonna be something that's cooling, that does something similar. This has neither of those. What they're relying on is those humectants, the, the ingredients that pull water into the skin in order to plump it, which is my personal favorite kind of plumping lip products, but also the one that people don't tend to see as much result from. What I see is a skincare product when it comes down to it. Uh, this is a really nice product when it comes to long-term skin health of the lips with continued use, of course. So lots of humectants to pull water into the lips. Like I said, skin healing ingredients, skin smoothing ingredients. I do think that they are probably saying it's plumping due to the humectants pulling that water into the skin, but I totally could have missed something, honestly. Like this is the kind of lip plumper that I like, but I know some of y'all like the spicy stuff. This is not it. Just let you know, this not it. <laughs> Moving over to Ulta, another product from Iconic London. We have the Velvet Smooth Pore Refining Primer. It's $29. They say it is a whipped balmy primer that diffuses pores for cloud-like skin that's flawlessly iconic. This is, this is the interesting part. Versatile enough to be applied under makeup for flawless skin prep or dabbed on over makeup to reduce shine and refresh your look from day to night. Now, this is the thing is that, you know, there's probably a lot of primers that do that, that you can tap over makeup, but there's always the fear that it's going to remove the makeup, right? That it's going to break up foundation. So it's really nice that if it does that, they like let people know <laughs> and they use that as part of their marketing so that people can try it because I personally would never try a primer over foundation because I'd be worried about that lift. But if they say that it's good over makeup, then that would be more attractive to me as, from a marketing standpoint. So I love that for them. Hopefully it works the way they're saying it's gonna work. Next we have the Lancome Adol Tint Liquid Eyeshadow and Eyeliner. Those are $30 each. Again, we have a multi-use kind of product. Seven shades, they say it's a long wearing versatile liquid eyeshadow and eyeliner that can also be used on the cheeks. An easy to use multi-use formula that is smudge proof and sweat proof with up to 16 hours of wear. Again, I really like the idea of marketing it as multi-use. This product, if it was released five years ago, would probably was multi-use, you know, products like this, but they just didn't tell people. So I think that it's nice that they're mentioning it so people can try it and use the products for more than one thing. I don't think people necessarily think to use their products for multi-use. So I, I personally really love that. Two more products. We have the Tarte Man Eater Satin Blush Cheek Plump. $29, 10 shades, a lightweight liquid blush from Tarte that gives a satin flush with a plumping effect. So the plumping effect is coming from coconut water, hyaluronic acid, and vitamin E to keep the skin hydrated and smooth, again, with that plumper appearance. So with products like this, if your skin is dehydrated, this will probably give you a plumping effect. But if you use a moisturizer that already has glycerin or hyaluronic acid or something like that in it, you're probably not gonna notice any difference because your skin's already 
got the hydration from your moisturizer. So if you do use a moisturizer like that, you wouldn't get it necessarily for the plumping aspect of it. But if you don't use a moisturizer, you're gonna probably see some kind of difference in the hydration of your skin because the ingredients are in there. Either way, no matter what, shades look really pretty on this one. And then coming soon, couldn't find a launch date, but coming soon, the Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue All Over Luminizer Mineral SPF 20, $33, five shades, a limited edition multi-use complexion enhancer that boosts hydration instantly and over time for a natural healthy glow that comes from within. It looks similar to all the other glow products that have come out from e.l.f. and from Charlotte Tilbury and all of those brands. It looks very similar, just coming from Bare Minerals. All right, my friend, we have made it to PR purchase product of the week. Yes, beesh. Okay, so use this today. Very, very excited. The Unearthly Cosmetics Sorceress Smoke Palette. This was set in PR and I'm really enjoying it. This is the second time I've used this palette. Really, really had fun with it today. So I use mostly this, uh, the cool toned brown called Intention. A lot of that going on up in the crease along with uh, the shade Vision, which is like a peachy shade. On my lid, I really love this shade Ritual. It's kind of a smoky, shimmery brown. And then on the inner corner, I use the shade Potent, which is more of a like darker champagne, very, very sparkly, like a tan shade. And then as liner today, I put on my regular black liner and I top that with the shade Nightshade, which is a very shimmery, purpley kind of shade. I'm gonna go ahead and swatch the shades that I use today so that you can see kind of a sampling of what's going on here. So these are the shades that I used on my eyes today. And this shade in the middle, the one that's called Potent, it is potent. It is beautiful. It is freaking gorgeous. <laughs> I'm also looking forward to using that nightshade one a little bit more, that one that's kind of deep purpley shifty kind of guy. I love it. Really, really enjoying this. And thank you so much to Unearthly for sending this over. On my lips today, I did a little mixy mixy happening. So I got this Wayne Goss lipstick in my Beautylish Lucky bag that I purchased. This is in the shade Carnation, but it was really, really pink, my friend. It was really pink and it kind of freaked me out a little bit. I'll swatch it here for you. So this is what it looked like compared to what it's looking like on my lips now. It's just a little bit more bright pink. So what I did was I took a lip gloss and topped it over it. And then I topped it with a little bit of the shade Intention from the Sorcerer's Smoke Palette, that deep, cool brown, and just a kind of, I don't know, like not make it like less bright. <laughs> less intense and then I topped it with a little bit of the shade Sorceress which is like a pink shimmery goodness it's gorgeous and I just put a little bit of that right in the center just to um, kind of give my lips a little bit of a pop and I've very much been enjoying that lately it's kind of worn down a little bit because I've been talking a lot <laughs> but overall I just really like this lip look I think it's really pretty and then finally on my cheeks today this was PR from Colourpop from their Valentine's Day collection this is the cream blush in the shade Adore you and it is just a bright medium pink. Notable sales this week we have from Lights Lacquer the sale on sale. You're going to get 60% off in their sale section and then you can get an extra 30% off of those items from Sigma Influencer Sets promotional event February 5th through Thursday, February 8th. It starts at 9 a.m. CST. All of the favorite sets are 15% off and my code is being reactivated for that because I do have a favorite set over there. It's called the Amp It Up upset 10% extra using code GenLove. But it's the 10% off isn't just on my set, it's on any of the sets over there. So if you want like Robert Welsh's set or, you know, Glitzy Fritzy set, anybody's set over there, the code should work. Urban Decay is having a 25% off site-wide sweetheart sale, Viseart 30% off site-wide through February 8th, and Milk Makeup 15% off for the birthday sale. And that, my friends, was What's Up in Makeup this week. Thank you so, so much for watching. And of course, thank you as always to the What's Up in Makeup Facebook hunters. Their names are scrolling below me. Thank you so much for all of your submissions this week. Y'all are awesome. I appreciate you so much. A lot of the indie news came from them. So thank you for putting all of that in there. I appreciate you so, so much. If you enjoyed today's show, please hit the thumbs up button. It really does help me out a lot. And consider subscribing because you don't know if YouTube is going to recommend What's Up in Makeup to you on the homepage. Subscribing is the best 
best way to make sure you don't miss future episodes and future news. If you are not ready to go because you have enjoyed this so much and you want to hang out longer, I would love to have you. YouTube should be recommending a couple videos over here for you to watch, including two weeks ago. The product report is going to be down there. YouTube's going to pick the top video for you based on your viewing history. But if you do need to go because you got stuff to do, I get it. Thank you for hanging out as long as you did. And I'd love to you and I will see you in a video very, very soon. Bye.